Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us bright and early on a Friday morning at 8 a.m. We are so happy to have you right now with us. Uh, we have a great stream for you today on a virtual field trip with the Norton Museum of Art. Um, this one's especially uh, exciting because it's going to be in two languages. We're going to be doing it in English and Spanish. Um, so you'll hear English and then there'll be a, a Spanish translation. We also have a chat box over there on the right, so please feel free to add to the conversation. Please remember to keep your chat appropriate. This is a school event, so uh, no kind of uh, too much yelling with capital letters, too many emoji symbols. Those will be deleted, um, and if you still cannot can't handle yourself, we will have to remove you from your channel. So please keep the chat appropriate because it really does make the stream a lot more interesting if we can have you guys asking interesting questions or answering their questions interesting um, instead of just, you know, random stuff. So we appreciate that. Um, we just want to give these opportunities to you guys since we know that you weren't able to go on these field trips or talk to these fun people with your teachers. So that's why we're bringing this here to you. Um, as always, we have some moderators in the chat box as well. They have a little wrench next to their name. We have some special moderators today. I just want to thank so much from the multicultural and dual language departments. Um, they are going to help us moderate in Spanish as well. So uh, because this is in English and Spanish, not all of our moderators can speak Spanish. So um, that's why we brought in some of our experts as well. So um, thank you all for that. They're going to help out with our Spanish translations. They will answer any questions if you have questions in Spanish. That's what they're there for. So thank you so much for helping us out. Um, so with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Meredith and Veronica, and they are from the Norton Museum of Art, and they will first introduce themselves, and then we will have them start sharing their presentation. So Veronica and Meredith, thank you so much for joining us, um, and ladies, feel free to take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. My name's Meredith, and I'm an educator at the Norton Museum of Art. My name is Veronica. Mi nombre es Veronica y soy eh, una educadora de museo uh, en el Museo de Arte del Norton. And I'll be speaking in English and Veronica will be speaking in Spanish, but she also has some really exciting things to show us today that she'll be um, introducing in English and in Spanish. And today we are going to take a look at the Norton Museum of Art and we're also going to take a look at a work of art in our museum's collection. And remember that word collection because we're going to come back to that. I wonder what it means. You'll get to explore this work of art, ask questions about it in the chat box. You'll get to answer questions in the chat box. And perhaps it will inspire you to create some art after today's lesson. Reading a work of art is kind of like reading a book. You're going to look really closely at the work of art to find clues to think what it might be about. So we are really excited to show you this work of art, and it's going to take us something somewhere different, away from this rainy day. Así es, como Meredith eh, lo dijo en inglés, hoy día vamos a tomar como unos 40 minutos para hablar acerca de una obra de arte del museo. Lo vamos a hacer en español y en inglés, y si tienen algún comentario, les sugiero que lo hagan en el chat. Les vamos a presentar hoy día una obra Y una obra es casi como leer un libro, en la que ustedes saben muy bien que cuando abren un libro y lo lees, usas tus ojos para, hacer, para poder leer la historia. Lo mismo vamos a hacer hoy. Vamos a, a aprender a leer una obra de arte como leerías un libro. Estamos muy emocionadas eh, de poder eh, compartir con ustedes una obra de arte de la colección del Museo de Arte. Y recuerden esa palabra colección, porque vamos a regresar a conversar acerca de eso en particular. So here we are again. We're back to this idea of question. And I want to ask you, and you can answer in the chat box, in English or in Spanish, what does it mean to collect something? Quiero regresar a la pregunta que les dije. ¿Qué significa coleccionar algo? ¿Ustedes coleccionan algo? Yo les voy a enseñar en este momento una parte de mi colección de, de conchas, pero lo voy a decir en inglés primero y después regreso a español. 
So today I wanted to share, going back to Meredith's question, something that I love to collect. Oh, I awesome, love. Veronica. I can't wait to see. <laughs> so as you know, the museum is closed right now. So I am um, at the house, at my home. And one of the things that I love collecting are shelves. So I have tons of shelves that I collect in my home. Big shelves, red shelves, gray shelves. Shape, in different kind of shapes, like cone shapes. And people, actually, my friends and family, when they travel, they bring me shells from all over their travels. I collect them usually when I take walks at the beach. And I place them in very specific, beautiful places around my house because they're precious and they're very, very important to me. So, Veronica, we have um, some answers of what, what a collection means. And um, I know you want to share your collection in Spanish as well. So people say to save things, um, uh, to get stuff. That's right, to put stuff together. Um, a group of things that you have. So just like your shelves, you have a group of things. That's what it means to collect. You want to show our viewers in Spanish your collection? Sí, les quería compartir. Estamos hablando ahorita de lo que significa coleccionar y les quería compartir que una de las cosas que yo colecciono en mi casa, ahora que el museo está cerrado y estoy aquí, quería compartir. Yo colecciono conchas, conchas grandes, conchas pequeñas, conchas en forma de cono, conchas rojas y estas conchas las tengo en mi casa en lugares muy especiales porque es lo que yo colecciono y aprecio. Las tengo en lugares muy, muy especiales de mi casa. Entonces, ahora quiero que ustedes me digan qué es coleccionar para ustedes y qué cosas coleccionan. And now, ah, me now aquí we're veo que alguien respondió, colección es juntar cosas y agrupar cosas juntas. Muy bien. Awesome. And now we want to know what you collect. I'm already seeing some things in the chat. So feel free to add to the chat in English and Spanish things that you collect. I see someone says that they collect, um, used to collect Beanie Babies and Barbies from all around the world. Y yo estoy viendo que alguien dice que colecciona libros de Don Quijote de la Mancha, que es uno de los um, autores más famosos en español. Oh, look, and Veronica, somebody collects action figures. I also saw Legos, of course. Legos, también la gente colecciona Legos. And um, this is a fun one for Florida. Somebody collects Disney stuff. Está tan cerca, Disney. Disney, someone collects things from Disney. We're right there. Oh, look, as a kid, someone collected um, My Little Pony dolls. And today, they collect books. Someone else, just like you, Veronica, collects sea glass. So something from the ocean. Hay gente que colecciona eh, el uh, vidrio del cristal de la, de, la, de la playa también, que les gusta ir a la playa como, como a mí. So we'll, we're going to actually, we want to show you a little bit about the Norton, but please keep on putting your ideas about your collections in the comment boxes. We love hearing what you collect. Oh, look, very on point for an art museum. Somebody collects crowns. Alguien dice que, cole, que colecciona eh, eh, coins, mm. monedas, eh, football cards, eh, tarjetas de, 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 de soccer. Gracias por haber compartido todas sus ideas. Sigan poniendo cosas en el chat que queremos Meredith y yo seguir oyendo. Pero ahora vamos a enseñarles y compartir un poquito más acerca del Norton y lo que nosotros coleccionamos en el museo. Ok, so now we're going to go to a picture. Mr. Norton, the Norton Museum of Art is actually named after a real person named Mr. Norton. So if we can pull up that image. Awesome. Okay, this is um, a picture of Mr. Norton and his wife, Elizabeth. And like you all, he collected something. He collected art from all around the world. He had art in every part of his house, bursting from the walls, on the floors. He had so much art that he decided that he wanted to share it with the world. He wanted our community, not just rich people, he wanted everybody to be able to see art, no matter where you were from. 
So he opened the Norton Museum of Art in 1941. And if we can put up our image of um, the 1941 entrance, the next slide. So this is the original 1941 entrance of the museum when it opened. And you can still see this entrance today. If you go into our museum garden and walk all the way around, you can see this entrance um, and it faces the water. We have a new entrance uh, that just we just reopened in February 2019. If you want to go to the new image, the next slide. This is what our museum looks like today. So the old 1941 entrance is kind of at the back of the museum. And this is how you enter the museum. It's a beautiful new sleek design. We have a big sculpture in the front um, with a, a water feature as well. So we're really excited to reopen the museum this Febu last February um, to the public. So we have a lot of new spaces. We even have a restaurant where you can eat, a store, and a beautiful new space to show Mr. Norton's collection. So like Mr. Norton, we um, collect five different things here at the Norton. If you go to the next slide. The Norton Museum of Art collects American art, Chinese art, contemporary art, European art, and photography. So you can see all of these different kinds of art from all around the world here in our museum in West Palm Beach. Over to you, Veronica. See, John, if we can go back to the Mr. Norton and his wife's image again. Ahora les voy a contar un poco de la historia de cómo se, eh, cómo se eh, eh, llevó el Norton a la zona de Florida. Ralph Norton y su esposa Elizabeth Norton coleccionaban arte para decorar su casa. Tenían tanto arte en toda la casa que decidieron tener un espacio donde puedan poner su arte. Por eso decidieron construir la galería de Norton en el 1941, donde pudieran poner toda la colección de arte que ellos tenían en su casa. Y es donde se inauguró, si vamos a la próxima slide. Gracias. Esta es la, la fachada de la entrada del Norton en 1941, más de 70 y pico de años atrás. Ahora, regresando al 2019, que es donde es, está el nuevo Norton, y la entrada que va hacia la Dixie Highway. Next slide. Es el nuevo Norton, donde pueden ver el, el árbol grande de, de Banyan y una escultura que saluda a toda la gente que, regresa, que entra al museo. En este museo, así como yo colecciono conchas, Norton, Mr. Norton y, y Elizabeth Norton decidieron poner todo su arte. Tenemos cinco colecciones de arte en el museo. Arte de las Américas, arte de la China, arte contemporáneo, arte europeo y fotografía. Back to you, Meredith. Okay, so if we could put up the slide, the next slide. Awesome, here we are, the main events. We're going to take a moment to look closely at this work of art. We want you to look up, down, side to side, look all around. Just scan all around the painting. This is an actual work of art in our European collection that you can see when you visit the museum, hopefully soon. Esta, esta es la obra de una de la colección nuestra de arte europeo que queremos compartir con ustedes. Y así como hablamos al principio que leer una obra es como leer un libro, vamos a tomar unos minutos para observar y leer esta obra usando sus ojos, desde arriba, hacia abajo, al centro, en las esquinas. Usen sus ojos como que escanean la obra. Y quiero que tomen 
unos minutos para observarla. Ojalá que cuando podamos abrir el Norton puedan venirla a ver en persona. Pero por ahora la vamos a ver virtualmente. Meredith. So we want to ask you a question, and you can answer again in, in English or Spanish in the chat. What do you notice in this work of art? Someone says it's beautiful. Quiero que tomen ahora un momento para que me digan en el chat, ¿qué es lo que ven en esta obra? Comenten en el chat, ¿qué es lo que ven? Denme sus opiniones. Someone says they notice the texture. Yeah, I'm kind of noticing um, uh, the brush strokes seem to be, um, if you want to put up your right hand. Want to put up your right hand too, Veronica? Oh, Veronica, I'll, I'll use a pen. You're so good. If you could pull back up the work of art, I'd love to see if you guys could tell us. With your hand, show us what you think the brush strokes look like. ¿Cómo harían, cómo serían las formas? Son pequeños y cortos, ¿verdad? Oh, yeah. Okay. We have these really thick brush strokes. And in person, you can actually see the brush strokes that this artist has created to make um, uh, the, the foliage, the trees that you see, and the sky. What else do people see? Oh, somebody good, practice with your, good practice with your pen, which you could also, it's kind of like sketching it. That's how it begins. You know, painting begins with sketching. So Absolutely. Veo que dice gente que ve árboles. Someone sees um, textures and layers. So they're noticing maybe that there's kind of, a, we see these buildings in the back and we see more trees and landscape in the front. Ven el, el cielo, yo veo el cielo, ¿verdad? Qué lindo el color del cielo. Los colores son muy oscuros hacia la parte inferior. En la parte de abajo, que los colores son más oscuros, que en la parte de arriba, donde los colores son más claros. Gracias. It also, um, someone said it looks like a beautiful day there. So maybe we'll have a similar day, but they're noticing that um, we seem to have some blue sky up above. I'm noticing that the artist has even created some sunlight coming through the trees. I notice a little path on the bottom. It seems like it has sunlight shining on it. Y hablando, uh, Meredith, speaking of that path, um, if someone says that it's warm and welcoming. Oh, I love that. I think the colors also bring that welcoming feel to it. Alguien está observando que hay como un pequeño camino en la mitad o que entra al centro y dicen que uh, parece que es muy, um, que da muchas ganas de entrar a este camino. So somebody noticed um, that it looks warm and welcoming. We talked about the light. Hmm, what do you all notice about the colors? Estamos hablando acerca de la luz. Alguien dijo que abajo estaba más oscuro, que arriba es más claro. Y eso nos dirige a la siguiente pregunta. ¿Qué me pueden decir? ¿Qué nos pueden decir acerca de los colores? ¿Qué observan acerca de los colores en esta pintura? Oh, someone said cool colors. Okay, so we're seeing um, cool colors are, are kind of colors such as the, the blues we see in this work of art. And we're seeing up at the top here, we're seeing some really dark colors against some really, um, some lighter colors as well. Un poco oscuros, alguien dice que un poco oscuros. Alguien dice colores cálidos. ¿Cuáles son los colores cálidos? Si pueden observar, ¿cuáles son los colores cálidos en esta obra? 
¿Dónde encuentran colores cálidos? Verde y azul. We all, a lot of people are also noticing, Veronica, that there's warm colors and cool colors. So the artist is kind of using contrasting colors next to each other. And we'll talk a little more about why he did that in a moment. Yes. They keep referring to dark and light colors. Those are great observations. You are really using your eyes. Están usando sus ojos para darnos todas esas observaciones. Hay mucho que ver en esta pintura. Mucho que ver y mucho que observar. Yeah, I love that people have really been looking all over the painting. People notice the buildings in the background. They notice the cool colors in the sky. They notice the path at the very front. Someone even said, Veronica, that it seems like it's a very isolated place. And that's such a good uh, comment. We don't see any people in this work of art. It is a landscape. Um, so it kind of gives us the feeling of being isolated, maybe isolated um, in the middle of this garden. And someone did mention at the beginning that it was a landscape. Alguien mencionó al principio que era una obra de arte. So now we want to ask you, what time of day do you think this is? If you had to make a guess, and you can answer in English or Spanish in the chat. Ahora quiero que tengan unos momentos para la siguiente pregunta y nos digan qué hora del día creen que es. Qué hora del día piensan que es. So people are saying it's definitely daytime. And I wonder what time of day in the day. Hmm. Alguien dice lindo contraste. La luz, ¿verdad? La luz del contraste. Quisiera vivir ahí. Yo también quisiera estar ahí ahorita. Mm, someone, two people say they think it's morning. Sí, hay mucha gente que le da curiosidad saber otra día en el día. Hmm. I kind of see, um, I'm noticing all the, the light coming down on a path. Almost look like it's coming from the, if I'm looking at the work of art, almost coming down from the left side onto the path. So I'm trying to imagine what time of day the light would be on that. Oh, someone else said almost sunset. Almost sunset. I saw that. Alguien dijo. Hay muchas cosas que ver en este paisaje. Otra persona es sí, que parece en la mañana. ¿Muy temprano en la mañana o más tarde en la mañana? These are all really good guesses. En la mañana. Mid morning. These are all really good guesses. This is a work of art by an um, artist whose name you might recognize. His name is Claude Monet. And this work is called Gardens of the Villa Moreno in Bordeguera. Claude Monet was a French artist, but he spent some time in Italy and he was obsessed with light. He is what we call an impressionist painter. And impressionist painters love to paint the light. What he did is he went, he painted outside what's called in plain air, and we actually have a vocabulary word that we can put on the board. And he painted in plain air in these beautiful gardens in the town of Bordeguera in Italy. And he was so obsessed with the light that he wanted to show what the light looked like at different times of day. So this maybe is morning, maybe we think it's afternoon, we see the sun maybe is kind of setting and coming down onto the path. He's used different colors. People notice the really, really dark colors against the really, really light colors. So he's kind of showing us the light um, by contrasting those colors together. Oh, there's our word impressionist. So Monet was an impressionist painter. 
Sí, ahora voy a hablar acerca de quién creó esta obra. Esta, esta obra de arte europeo la creó Claude Monet, en, es un artista que nació en 1840 en Francia, y él estaba realmente, eh, su obsesión era la luz, y cómo nuestros ojos veían los colores y la luz durante el día. Lo que él hacía, como muchos artistas impresionistas, eran que se sentaban afuera y practicaban el, la, el arte que se llama, pintaban en plein air, which means en plein air, que significa en al aire libre. Y estudiaban el sol durante todo el día y se sentaban en el mismo lugar para ver cómo la luz transfería en ese paisaje. Esta parte de cómo usar los colores juntos, el movimiento de los colores, y los colores complementarios, que era lo que creaba eh, la impresión de la luz. Y la impresión es tener una idea o una o opinión acerca de algo. Y es lo que ellos transformaban en su canvas en este paisaje. This would look like at different times of day. Monet would have stood in this exact spot looking from the garden onto the town and uh, painting the light at different times of day. This was a new concept. People didn't even paint outside much longer before this. They always painted in their studio. He said that light is the most important person in the painting. So we notice there's no people in this. The light was kind of like the characters that you might see in a book. He wanted the light to be the most important subject, the character, the thing that we saw in this painting. So I see the light hitting the path. I see the light up above on the town. I see the light hitting the trees and I even see a palm tree. So um, he was very, very interested in his light being the main character of this painting. Sí, y Claude Monet era un artista francés, como les comenté, pero él vivía en Francia y viajó a Italia, al sur de Italia, para pintar esta obra que se llama Los Jardines de la Villa Moreno en Bordighera, Gardens of the Villa Moreno en Bordighera, en Italia. Entonces, esto le permitió a él viajar y también poder ver cómo el sol se refleja en las diferentes partes del mundo. Como ustedes saben, cuando uno viaja, el sol se refleja diferente en la nieve, el sol se refleja diferente en el mar, en las palmas. Entonces, él estudió este paisaje y lo que hacía era tratar de pintar afuera el mayor tiempo posible. Él dijo que la luz era la persona más importante en la pintura. Pero pensemos, ¿hay personas en esta pintura? No hay. Eso quiere decir, como en un libro hay personajes importantes, el personaje más importante en las obras, de, en esta obra de Monet, es la luz. In 81, and Monet traveled from France to Italy by the by a train. No airplanes back then. Not like we're going on airplanes that much anyway now. But we want to ask you, and you can answer on the chat in English or Spanish, if you could go anywhere, if you could take a canvas and paint and paint anywhere in the world right now, if we weren't on lockdown, where would you go? I imagine that if I could paint anywhere, I would go to the beach. I know the beach is close, but I've missed the beach so much, and that's where I'd want to paint. Sí, hablando acerca de la luz y el lugar, si tú fueras un pintor, ¿cómo poner? Y pudieras tener la oportunidad de pintar en plein air, 
al aire libre. Pudieras viajar a cualquier parte del mundo en tu imaginación. ¿Dónde irías? ¿Dónde viajarías? ¿Y qué pensarías? Yo, pensando en dónde me gustaría ir y qué me gustaría pintar, me encantaría regresar a Quito, Ecuador, de donde estoy, y poder pintar las bellas montañas y cómo el sol refleja en ellas. Ahora comenta en el chat a dónde te gustaría viajar y qué te gustaría pintar. Ok, we're getting some answers. People would say they would go to their house, my house, Paris, Kansas, <laughs> Hawaii, that's a good Japón. one. Oh, la playa, como Meredith, que extraño la playa, just like Meredith misses the beach, I know, we all miss it. Oh, somebody would go to Japan. Japón, Silver Springs, China. Oh, okay, this would be a great one to paint, and I bet people have plain, painted it in plain air, the Grand Canyon. Eh, Meredith uh, comentó del Gran, Can del Gran Cañón. And speaking of that, Meredith, uh, talk about warm colors and the light reflecting in those beautiful orange, reddish mountains. How beautiful. I can already see it. Monet, I think, would really like to paint the Grand Canyon if he could. <laughs> if he were Ahí comentó el, el Gran Cañón. Piensen en los colores, en los colores eh, cálidos del, del Gran Cañón. Las montañas rojas, anaranjadas. Hawaii. Oh wow, someone would paint um, New Mexico, um, California. Maybe they would go to Korea because there's cherry blossom trees there and they would love to paint cherry blossom trees. I love all of these imaginations of where you would want to go right now and paint. Y la última, alguien que dice, me encantaría volver a Honduras. Mi familia, yo tengo familia en Honduras y pintar las playas de mi país. Lo mismo pienso, me encantaría pintar. New York. Ah. En New York, el paisaje sería totalmente diferente, ¿verdad? Pintaríamos, a menos que estemos en el Central Park, pintaríamos edificios, ¿verdad? O otro tipo de cosas. I agree, the light look would look really different in a city with big, tall buildings versus somewhere like the Grand Canyon. Ah, oh, someone would go to the Red Rocks and paint the blue sky, kind of like we see the blue sky in Monet's work. They would paint the red rocks against the blue sky. I love these answers. Me encanta. I love them. It's actually, I'm actually transporting myself. Me estoy transportando a todos estos lugares. He hecho un, un mini, una, un viaje pequeño. And that's what I love about this work of art because Monet is transporting us into these gardens. He's actually, he created this little path um, for us. It's almost like he's inviting us to come and walk on the path. He put it right in the middle of the painting and he um, has made these, these bushes really, really big and he's done the building small in the back. That's called perspective. He wanted us to almost be able to imagine ourselves going on to the path. So I love that we're using our imagination to think about um, being in this, this painting, but also thinking about where we would go. Oh, someone said they would go to Colombia. Me encanta Colombia. Eh, otra cosa también de mencionar acerca de Clomoné en esta obra es que él ha usado todos los elementos del arte para crear esta composición. Al principio alguien mencionó la textura, la textura de las hojas, la textura del cielo, la textura también del edificio, ¿verdad? Tenemos este pequeño camino en el centro donde se ven las sombras de las hojas reflejadas y nos lleva hacia el final a este edificio donde está creado en perspectiva, ¿verdad? Que nos da la ilusión de que es 3D, es pues un edificio plano, ¿verdad? Entonces, estos elementos del arte, el color, la textura, ojalá me pudieran decir otras más en el chat. So we've been looking at the different, what's called the elements of art. We've noticed the color, we've noticed the texture, we've noticed now the perspective. So again, these are all things that you are looking at, and that's how you read a work of art. You've, um, just, just from noticing, 
You have learned how to read a work of art and learn about the elements of art. Oh, somebody, somebody, um, we go to um, Guatemala, Venezuela. Venezuela, mi esposo es de Venezuela. Arizona, Sequoia Forest in California. Imagínense dibujar esos árboles. Ay, qué lindo. Las mariposas, la migración de mariposas en, en, en el sur de California, México. The butterflies. Texas, Meredith. Woohoo, I'm from Texas. Ay, qué belleza. Volvería a un atardecer en los viñedos de Cádiz en España. So someone would go to Spain. Great responses. Thank you all for um, really taking a close look at the work of art. I forgot to mention that this is an original work of art that um, Mr. Norton collected. So it's been part of the Norton set from the very beginning. A lot of students, when we have them in the museum, one of the first thing they notice is the palm tree. I'd like to think that Mr. Norton bought this because the palm tree reminded him of West Palm Beach. Así es, lo que Meredith mencionó es muy importante. Esta es una de las primeras obras que Ralph Norton coleccionó eh, y vino directamente de la persona que estaba encargada de ayudar a Monet, que es importantísimo. Y tiene, es uno de los highlights eh, más importantes en el museo. Pero es verdad lo que Meredith preguntó, que tal vez la fauna y la flora de la Florida lo inspiró a, a tener esta, esta obra porque le recordaría tal vez del eh, clima tropical en, en el área de, de Palm Beach. So now we'd like to show you some activities that you can do at home in case you want to continue your journey with art. So we do have a website called Norton.org and you can go um, to Norton from home. You can watch different videos about art. You can learn about more art activities. Thank you, yeah, Norton.org. And we have our own activities too that we think would be really fun for you to do. The first one is, you just did this. If you want to, you can take, thank you, Veronica, you can take a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper, or you can even do this in your mind if you don't want to write anything down. And you can imagine what you would name Monet's work of art. If you could name it any title, which is the name of the work, what would you name it? Let's see. If I could name the title of Monet's work of art, I would name it Beautiful Italian Village in the Sun. What about you? Si sí, nosotros les vamos a dar un par de actividades que pueden hacer en la casa para continuar. Ustedes ya tienen ahorita, ya saben cómo leer una obra de arte, saben cómo escanearla. Para extender esa actividad en casa y para que sigan viendo la obra y descubrirla, podrían darle un título. Solo necesitan un lápiz y una pluma. Y a mí me pareció que el título que me gustaría darle sería Entre las palmas, In Between the Palms. Another activity, I love that name. I love that too. Another activity that you could do is that you can pretend to be Monet and you can actually do your own sketching outside. So I live in an apartment, so maybe I could sketch on my balcony um, and think about what I see. All you need is a pencil or a pen, a piece of paper, maybe you have a notebook um, from school like this. Maybe even you just take some newspaper, some scrap paper around your house and sketch for 30 seconds. You could even sketch longer. You could sketch for 30 minutes what you see around you. So you might want to go outside and sketch some trees, some shrubs, maybe a beautiful flower that you see. If you can't get outside, I bet you can use your imagination and you can dream up a beautiful outdoor landscape to sketch. And Veronica went in her backyard and she did some sketches too. And if, if um, she could even keep on going with that and add some color with some markers or crowns, um, she could add more detail in the background. Wow, what a beautiful job, Veronica. How long did that take you? Um, it took me about the, the first quick sketch 
um, a, a few seconds, and then about 10 minutes just, you know, with the lines and the cross hatching. Um, so I had fun. Not everybody has plants or trees outside, but you can just catch maybe just a flower or something that you stumble upon. I love it. You're acting like Monet and, and, and drawing in plain air. Very cool. La segunda actividad que quería compartir con ustedes rápido es, aparte de título, igual necesitan solamente un lápiz y un papel. Y yo salí afuera como Monet y los impresionistas y e hice un boceto muy rápido con lápiz eh, de mi patio afuera. Me encantan los potes de cerámica y un pequeño, eh, un pequeño paseíto que tengo. Entonces lo hice rápido. Este es el, el sketch, que es un estudio pequeño. Es una actividad rápida que pueden hacer en la casa y si no tienen un patio pueden hacer un estudio pequeño de alguna flor que encuentren. Meredith. So we hope that looking at uh, Monet, that it will inspire you to keep on looking at art, reading that work of art, and also making your own art at home or out in the world. Again, you can visit Norton.org and visit the Norton from home page if you want to learn more and teachers we also have a resource page for you there's our Norton from home page and we have a norton.org slash teachers uh, website and you can find different professional development opportunities as well as teacher resources including lesson plans on how to connect your curriculum to our collection for all ages so we hope that you'll visit us soon once we reopen until then, please visit our website to learn more about our collection and to engage with the art that we have. Quería darles las gracias por todos sus comentarios hoy día, por sus observaciones, por haber usado todo este tiempo para aprender a leer una obra de arte. Ahora tienen una habilidad más, aparte saben cómo leer una obra, cómo estudiarla. Espero puedan extender la actividad con un sketch en la naturaleza como los impresionistas. Y antes de irme, simplemente quería compartir dos enlaces. Uno, desde la nueva página del Norton, que es Norton desde la casa, Norton from home, donde pueden encontrar muchísimos recursos, incluyendo actividades, videos, conciertos, eh, música que pueden compartir no solamente ustedes, sino con su familia y la gente en casa. Y aparte también para las profesoras que nos están viendo, gracias por su apoyo y todo lo que hacen. Tenemos muchos recursos para los profesores, for educators. Pueden encontrar el póster de educacional de la lección basada en Claude Monet hoy también. Y cuatro pósters adicionales de la colección, de cada una de las colecciones. Gracias por su tiempo hoy. Thank you, everybody. Ha sido un placer. Gracias por todo. We hope to see you there. Awesome. Thank website. you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. it. It was really awesome taking a look at that painting and really learning how to look at paintings as well. So I appreciate that. Um, I can't wait to get to visit the Norton too. I've not been there. So I, I'm definitely going to have to follow up there. We'll be waiting um, for you, John. Awesome. Um, so for those of you joining us, thank you again. We appreciate you. We do want you to share your thoughts. So we have a flip grid that we've made. Uh, flip grid's like an educational TikTok. And um, with that, we want you to either take a quick picture of this QR code, or you can visit the link to go to the to the flip grid and share your response. Uh, tell the tell Veronica and Meredith what you thought of the painting. Um, let them know what you would have titled it. Um, whatever you want to share, you get thirty seconds. Um, and we'll we'll be moderating them, looking at them, and then we're going to create a mixtape that we'll send to Veronica and Meredith so that they can see your responses. So um, please take a, a, a advantage of this so that we can share what you've learned to them. Please note, though, for teachers, uh, it looks like a lot of our teachers are using this as, assignment, as an assignment, which is great. Just know we're getting through them as fast as we can. There's a group of us looking at them to moderate them all. But if you are using them for a, gr uh, a grade, please be sure to reach out to us. Uh, we're trying to approve them as fast as we can, but it may be a, a little delayed. Uh, but we do appreciate you sharing that with your students, too. Um, also, teachers, we have some resources for you. So the Flipgrid link is there, but there's also Norton's website. 
There's uh, some resources as well from Newzella and the Norton, the collection of posters. Um, I believe we may even put the lesson plan up there as well. So all of that is there on our website at PBC Virtual Experiences. Um, that's just the bit.ly link. Later on today, we have the Manatee Lagoon at 1130. That's going to be so much fun when we go up to the Manatee Lagoon and learn more about that area. So please join us today at 1130 for the Manatee Lagoon. And then next week, our next streaming, because we have a three-day weekend, our next stream is actually on Tuesday. And we have a full schedule on Tuesday with four live streams. So at 8 a.m., we're going to have the Historical Society of Palm Beach County to talk to us a little bit about the history of this county and of where we live. At 10 o'clock, we're going to have a legal panel. And the legal panel may sound a little boring at first, but just so you know, they're actually going to be joining us from around the world. So we're going to have a lawyer from Philly, one that lives in London, and one that's in Brazil. And they're all three going to join us at the same time and they are the ones that take on some of the bad, um, the bad guys. They take on some, some of the pharmaceuticals and other companies that are just, you know, not good for people. So that's going to be a great panel, too. Then at 1130 that day on Tuesday, and I'm going to mess, it's the Benzatine, I believe, Center of the Arts. Um, and they're going to be doing some glass blowing for us and talk about the, what it is to blow glass and make glass. And then at 2 in the afternoon on Tuesday, we're going to have an author. His name is Stephen. And he's going to share a little bit about his career, but also talk about one of the books that he wrote about the Holocaust. Um, it's about a little girl and her dog who had to uh, live in, in um, hiding for years. So um, that's all coming on Tuesday. So that's a lot of things on Tuesday that we're excited to share with you. Teachers, please feel free to share those with your students as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to let Veronica and Meredith have the last word and just uh, thank everyone and say goodbye. Thank you. We'll see you back at the museum soon. Yeah, I kept reading your, your chat comments. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Muchas gracias.